The body to me is an amazing feature. I mean, it's just how people are able to sculpt it. Like chiseling a piece of wood, you can chisel it into anything you want, really, if you know what you're doing. But for Edward Island to me is the one. When I started bodybuilding, a lot of people would come up to me and say, why are you doing this, Johnny? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, why aren't, why aren't you going to university? Why aren't you taking this course? Why aren't you going out west? Why aren't you doing this? Welcome to walk its red soil But farmers are happy to work and to toil There's thousands of atoms in this land of ours It just, it was a no-brainer. Like, that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. A touch of God's great hand, this island must be. For instead, Wood Island is heaven to me. When I was growing up, this is my the first place I lived. Is the yellow apartment buildings? That's where I lived till I was seven or eight years old, I guess. This is our little post office. That's where all the mail comes in and goes out of. I like getting the mail, so I, uh, I always make sure I'm there first. This is the local wharf. This is actually where my dad fish, fished out of the whole time I was growing up. Whenever they were fishing lobsters, they'd have lobster traps here stacked on one side of the wharf. And we used to get on the traps and be jumping off the traps. And, and uh, the fishermen did not like that either. To say the least. So this is where I get my hair cut in Barbershop Peter. He is the best barber uh, anyone will ever find. Anytime I have to go to a different barber, I'm just not in good humor. Okay, so this yellow and brown house is where my sister lives now. You know, look at that, look at the air, look at the mess. She gets that from her mother. <laughs> That's where my buddy Patrick lives. I've had a lot of ups and downs through my life, uh, more than the average person, that's, that's for sure. So we're here at uh, Patrick's Grave. Um, we're in Cape Traverse, Prince Edward Island. We've got his picture there, the hockey sticks, it's really nice. Um, when Pat passed, he was 16. Uh, he passed in, on July 15, 2005. Well, when Johnny was in, back in high school, he had a really good friend uh, who committed suicide. Patrick and Johnny were the best of friends, right? Um, so everybody was sort of devastated by it. And, it's, you know, it's, when your best friend takes his own life, um, it's something that you, you never forget that. It was tough on everyone in the town, and it took a hard hit to Johnny. And um, alcohol kind of was his savior th that he thought. When I drank, I, I blacked out every single time. I had my first drink of alcohol when I was 13 years old. Well, his behavior probably uh, deteriorated because I don't think he would have went out and just, he wouldn't have taken his life in the way that Patrick did. You know, if somebody said, are you, are you you suicidal or you're thinking about killing yourself, he probably would have answered no, but his behavior and his, and his lifestyle certainly um, wasn't indicative of someone who, was, who really didn't care. So this is the area, area right now where we're at, where I ended up getting alcohol poisoning and almost losing my life. Um, and that gazebo right there is where the little Battle of the Bands or um, gig was playing. And we were all, there's a, I don't know, fair little crowd out here, and there was cars parked out here and everything. A lot of, a lot of drinking going on. Um, and this is where I was unresponsive, and where they took me, ended up taking me to the hospital. Whenever I got that extra, extra pint or, or Mickey, whatever you want to call it, that's where it all went downhill. It was after he was having troubles, um, after Pat had died and yeah, Andrew the cop um, had called Mums and said that he was taking him right to the hospital because he went unresponsive in the back of the car. 
So uh, me and mom rushed right into the hospital and Johnny was on the table and he, um, his heart had stopped. And the doctor was coming out to tell my family that I had passed away. He walked outside the room, seeing my family, they're having a really tough time crying, you know, just holding each other, um, fearing the worst. And that's whenever the doctor said he turned around instantly and just tried to shock me more and try to get more of a beat off my heart. And that's whenever he did get a little jump in my heart and a little beat. So he just tried to work off it. it I went flat line again and he was able to, you know, give me some more jolts and to, and to bring me back um, for good. We're just all sitting in the waiting room waiting for the doctor to come and tell us, you know, that he's okay and that he's gonna be okay. And it just, minutes seemed like hours. You know, that was like one of the worst nights of my life. To see like the pain that he was going through and he was trying to, to save himself with alcohol and it, that wasn't the case at all. It was hurting himself, but everyone. It was definitely a scary time. More scary for my family, I think, because I didn't really know what was going on, but um, it's not something that my family likes to talk about too much. It's kind of, they kind of put that in the back burner. It brings back a, a bad time for them and a hard time for them. So I'm opening up to you guys right now because I want everyone to know that you know, no matter where you come from, what you do, or what issues you have, you can turn it around and you can be successful. So this is the entrance to the Johnny Dow Fitness Center. They named this little tiny fitness center above the local arena after me because they see the dedication and hard work I put into the sport. Now, this is not a huge facility or nothing like that. It's very, very, very minor. Um, but it does mean a lot to me that they took the initiative and actually put my name on, um, on, the, on the little gym here. So, you know, it says a lot for the community and, and says a lot for me and they just wanted to give back a bit. So let's go on in and take a look at it. There's the, uh, got my signature down there. Every day I was here at some point in time, um, from just when I was a little fella. Um, a lot of those days I would be on the ice. Blue hair, Adam AA, Island Champs, uh, Jonathan Dell. If I wasn't on the ice, I was watching hockey or, or watching someone play, and of course eating those Great, greasy french fries. Okay, so here's the little tiny facility that they named that. It's not big, they don't make money off this little gym. It's simply here for people that are starting out and that don't want to be intimidated going into a bigger gym. So I do know people that come here and train every single day and they seem to like it, you know? It's nice and close, convenient, it's very cheap, like next to nothing. And it's 24 hours, you can come up here whenever you want. So. When I was training for Junior National, I would come up here, you know, sometimes two, three, four in the morning when I couldn't sleep, and I'd be on the elliptical and I'd be on the treadmill just, just going. So they had the little, the sign up here. Looks pretty good. They did a pretty good job of it. Pretty happy with it. Arm session, arm thrashing. What I can get done with light weight now, I never ever in a million years before could. We're, we're two and a half weeks out. I feel great. One more. I'd have to say my number one fans are my closest family, you know, my, my grandmother, my mother, my sister, my nephews, uh, my girlfriend. I grew up with beaches surrounding me everywhere. I just put my headphones in and I just walk. Get him, Bella. Get him. No, it's a crib. <laughs>